I want to get back to that story we tried to bring you at the top of this newscast. The Sandy Hook school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, forced districts in all corners of the U.S. to rethink safety. Speaking with local leaders, here now is Fox 44's Josh Morrow. The lives of 26 Newtown students and school employees lost a decade of reflection and reform in Vermont. It gives us an opportunity to take a look within our circle as far as what we're doing to continue to enhance our, our school safety. After the Sandy Hook shooting in 2012, the state of Vermont has dedicated a plethora of resources to address public safety, both in and outside of schools. I think we are way out in front with the relationships that we have with our school safety partners. Some in Vermont have looked to mental health reform, while others have pleaded for increased gun laws to prevent a similar event from occurring close to home. And Governor Phil Scott tried to address public safety concerns, signing legislation in 2018 that allowed the state and law enforcement to crack down on gun use. And this past August, he released a 10-point public safety plan that includes a new violence prevention task force helping keep schools safe. But Robert Evans says staffing issues are a school safety concern that doesn't get enough attention. And more and more push to do more school safety related work and I think some schools and school districts are finding it difficult to keep up with that. Educators are trained extensively on safety procedures and de-escalation tactics, but Evans says there has been a learning curve with threat assessment. Is this just a behavioral based issue, a mental health based issue, or is there really some credibility to the threat that there could pose a significant concern? On a national scale, longtime Senator Patrick Leahy announced he is co-sponsoring an assault weapons ban, but as Congress weighs the presented bill, Evans says the six-year-old Vermont School Safety Center has helped prepare educators in dangerous situations in new ways. The methodology was the traditional what I call a lockdown approach where you get behind a locked door and get away from the windows and the doorways and, and you wait for law enforcement. While sometimes that may be a good strategy, we need to provide people with options. Josh Morrill, Fox 44 News.